Yes. 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 Get in. Get in. Get in. The USMNT has moved on to the quarterfinals after this 3-0 victory over Guinea. Um, huge result. You know, this was what needed. This result was what was needed. Um to consider this tournament a success, reaching the quarterfinal stage. And to score seven goals in the last two games, yes, some of the goals were scruffy. Yes, we took advantage of set pieces. But seven goals in the last two t games is very, very impressive, especially after the um, emotional letdown that we had in the first game of actually playing pretty well, but being on the end of a 3-0 dumping. To come back and now to get this victory, absolutely amazing moment and it's really really great that we um, found a way to move on to the quarterfinals and yeah first of all I'd like to um, applaud Mitrovic um, Mitrovic decided to change it up uh, in taking out Duncan McGuire who you know I've questioned his ability to say the least and bring in the likes of uh, uh, of Griffin Yao, who's been splendid in the few cameos that he had at the end of the previous two games before today's game. And Griffin Yao came in and had an absolute splendid sp pl game. And it was really, it was really, they listed it as the starting lineup. They listed Paxton Aronson as the false number nine. But him and Griffin Yao were kind of interchanging because they both have that ability, you know, honestly. They're both not number nines, but they both have ability. They both are technically more gifted to Duncan. So they both have versatility to, you know, interchange. That's what you get when you have players with ability up top rather than Duncan McGuire. That really just gives you work rate and pace and, uh, you know, a different way of playing out. But when you have players with actual skill up there, they can interchange. They can use their ability in tight spaces. And that's what we saw. We saw better ability amongst the attack. We saw a more fluid attack from us. And it made us very dangerous in transition because there was a fluidity about us with the way we, they were interchanging. It was absolutely brilliant to watch. Paredes look more comfortable in there too as well. Um, uh, he got two goals, so by far his best game so far of this tournament. There's no two ways about that. He was absolutely sensational, vital, getting that second goal that calmed it even more. And then, you know, eventually getting the the dagger at the end. Um, but, look, Guinea looked flustered. Guinea looked flustered. And when we got that first goal, Guinea were, you know, turning over the ball in areas that they wasn't even getting pressed that, you know, that hard you know and it was just a very sloppy from guinea and they really lacked any sort of you know play and then yes they were you know they had a lot more of the possession especially in the second half and the end of the first half and they were able to get more registered shots but a lot of that was the u.s allowing it to happen the u.s were put themselves in a position that they were especially after the second goal that they were comfortable get going on the back foot not getting out of second gear and allowing guinea to have possession of the ball because to be honest it was all mindless position it was a controlled possession from the u.s they allowed it to happen and they were fine with it because the u.s were just making it narrow and the u.s um, and mitrovic understood that these guinean players especially with navy Keita not being out who pulled up i believe with the injury a few minutes before kickoff you know you really saw the lack of organization in the midfield since nebi with the, the likes of nebi Keita. because let's be honest I have to be 100% honest. The Guinea team that I watched play against France and the Guinea team I watched play today, two different teams, two different teams. And you have to say, you know, you know, Nebi Keita's injury does have a big factor in that because he gives them that organization and that leadership and that experience in midfield. And that's, you know, they couldn't control it, especially early in the game. Whenever U.S. were on the front foot, they couldn't control that midfield. They couldn't get proper possession of the ball. They started getting possession when the U.S. dropped off and the U.S. were um, allowed Guinea to, you know, be in possession. But it was all controlled, as I said. And, and it, 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 that's a good ability to have to be able to understand situations, understand game moments. Because if the U.S. want to make this run to get a medal, they're going to have to bunker down against certain teams. They're going to play with up 
even against the likes of Morocco in the quarterfinal, that'll be a game in which there will be certain periods where they need to be tight, they need to be compact, they need to be close the spaces, and um, to keep the danger, you know, away from Schultz, because Morocco has quality to do that. Um, and they will need to be compact, and they'll need to show their quality. And there will be moments like that, absolutely. So it's good, you know, Mitrovic, he's able to provide that. I thought he made a great change with bringing in Griffin Yao for Duncan Maguire. Georgi Mihailovic, I have been negative towards him, but that was a good free kick. I thought overall his performance was, was decent. You know, he wasn't special or anything like that. You know, I saw some people getting carried away. Uh, but he was he was decent. He he was he, you know he wasn't bad. He wasn't horrible. It's just that you know with a guy that's an overage player, you're expecting him to be up up above and beyond the leader, the 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 best player in this team. But uh, you know he's taking advantage of his set piece opportunities. I think at today's game, his service on set pieces was a lot better, uh, a lot more dangerous. Um, I thought we had chances in set pieces. I thought Walker Zimmerman looked dangerous in the air with the height that he provides. And um, I think set pieces will be important in the knockout stages, especially going on against quality. That's going to be better than us, let's be honest. You know, we're going to play a Moroccan team that has better players than us, um, especially, you know, with their first, you know, five, six players. You know, they have some real, real quality in that team. They, uh, they, they can take advantage. They can take possession of the ball and really seize control of the game. Um, they have quality all over the pitch. So that's going to be an interesting tie. But going back to this game, yeah, well, Guinea, you know, they looked out of it. They didn't look comfortable. And, and you know, this game was really over before it began. And uh, extremely, extremely great performance. By the way, I, I add this. You know, this is the first time the USMNT who, um, has reached the quarterfinals of an Olympic Games since... 2000 24 freaking years since the last time the u.s has played a knockout stage game in the uh some in uh in the knockout stages in the olympic games the men's you know that's unbelievable yes we all know this is the first time that they qualified since 2008 but the first time you're playing a knockout stage game since 2000 and you know this was one of the best u uh usmnt's u23 performances um in the olympics Winning two of their three games, yeah, and uh, the way that they won their first two, uh, their last, the, the two games in which they punched them in the mouth and got rid of them early, uh, yeah. Even against France, you know, you could argue amongst the run of play, we were probably the slightly better team. Um, and uh, yeah, but no, overall, Griffin Yao, excellent game. Kevin Paredes, excellent. Um, I thought Aronson was decent. I thought Mihailovic was decent. Tessman, I think he's been solid throughout the entire tournament. Dietz, I think he did the job. Don't think he's exactly like Gianluca Busio, but I thought he did the job. I thought, again, Harriel and Tolkien weren't tested much, but um, were uh, good. I thought um, Zimmerman and Robinson, again, weren't tested much, but they were solid. Um, and, yeah, it's... Um, it's uh, it's a great result and a great performance. Seven goals in their last two games uh, against New Zealand and uh, and Guinea. Seven goals. Um, this is exactly uh, this is exactly how they wanted to get it done. Uh, now they take on Morocco at Parc des Princes, um, which will be an amazing, amazing crowd. It's gonna be you know. A home game for Morocco, you know, with Morocco. Morocco has had great support at these um, at these Olympic Games. Um, you know, they've had a really great support. You know, being close to being relatively close with France, having a big Moroccan contingent in France. You know, um, they've been well supported, and you know, the the Parc des Princes quarterfinal will be packed with fans. I think we'll get a lot more casual fans watching this game, casual soccer fans at quarterfinals of an Olympic Games for the U.S. men's. And I think it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant watch. And I'm real, uh, real excited. Real excited. 
And I think if the U.S. could take advantage of set pieces, they're able to defend the well um, in certain moments, not being afraid to be tighter, having a, a lower block, and forcing the other teams to break you down, and then being able to... Because another thing that's you know underrated about this team is this team can play in transition. This team, number one, they, they can win the ball out high up the field, and they have the ability to press and win the ball in, in dangerous areas, but they also have the ability to sit back, observe, and play in transition. They have the pace, they have the quality, and they have the cohesion in the team to go one, two, three, you know, from midfield and get it to one of the players in the front three in a one-on-one -on -one moment, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation to make something happen. They have that sort of ability and cohesion with the team, which is really great to watch, especially, you know, and it shouldn't be much surprising because a lot of these core guys was part of that U20 US team that was able to, I believe, reach the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Um, I believe so something of that sort so you know these are some you know these are some good players with chemistry in this team so yeah I'm I'm very excited to see what this will go and I don't want to preview too much of the Moroccan game because we'll preview a little bit later on but it's gonna be fantastic to watch and it's a great result